So she's gone that way. I'm going this way. Let's see how we crack on. The map's out. Let's rock and roll. So me and the wee man on an adventure. Just hooked up the LK35 with the carabiner. Just crossing the uh, this river's this. Let's have a look on the map. Oh, sewage up river, lovely. So across the map, I'm gonna go down one of the bridleways all the way along the half Hartforth and up in the plantations if he ever gets off the sniff. So here we are on the road, heading out that way. LK35 ready to rock and roll. Let's see what the this brings. It's a nice little nine mile hike into Richmond. The rest of them are gonna be there by the time I get there, so hopefully the beers will be chilled. See you in the next time. This one is loving life. Hey boss, let's go. Let's go. Get on it. Such a lush day this. Walking up in fields, trying to keep the dog from tripping me up. Minion. It's gorgeous. Rolling hills. Boy, a few with some cows in. Kept them away from them. Not bad. Lovely weather. Look at that blue sky. Couldn't help for better. Gotta stay hydrated though. This is quite a walk, a little hike. I mean, look at how the other half live. Jesus, Some big places. A lovely little river. Fields of green, woods up ahead. Bus in the grass. Should be a good day. I mean, look at that pristine, lovely woodland. The time I'd spend in there, just walking around. <laughs> Yeah, amazing. Stretches all the way down. Gorgeous. We're heading up here. Little glade, a bit of shade for this one, and for me for that matter. Through the wood, on the other side, and up the hill a bit, and down the next plantation. Oh yeah, some gorgeous oak trees. Oh, makes you feel like you're in Robin Hood's Sherwood Forest. <laughs> a little bit north of that. It's a walk into Richmond, so. I'm just, I came off at Gilling West. Laura dropped me off. A big thank you to Laura, because she haven't had a crying baby probably all the way to Richmond. And the fact that she needed the loo. Scotch Corner was an absolute pain in the backside. Jammed on the roundabout. It took us, oh, it was about 20 minutes to do 0.1 of a mile across the roundabout. Ridiculous. But never mind. Got here now, on the way. I want the second leg so far. A mile and a quarter into it. Oh, got a lovely little woodland track. If it was dark, I think it was spooky. Catch the next one. Just a little update while I'm walking, a nice little bit of bit of air track. The LK35, only got it yesterday. Put my first mod in from my, from MCQ Bushcraft, which is the foam, keep the shape of it, which is mint. Allows you to pack everything down. But this thing is epic. Now, I've got a Telemark pack, which is, or also known as Ludwig, which is Norwegian military which used by the Norwegians and British Royal Marines up until about the 80s, early 90s. And that thing's a beast. But this, for a simple day rucker, or well, overnighter, I've got no soreness yet, obviously. Don't hold to it, touch wood somewhere, plenty of it. Um, but it's been coming since I put it on. Easy just with straps. Don't know why people replace straps. These are perfectly wet. Don't dig in. Not like some of the kit I was issued when I was in the reserves. That was absolutely gash. This stuff, I mean, the Scandinavians, they know how to do it. This stuff is great. I love a bit of surplus as well. I mean, it's bomb proof, literally bomb proof. This one's got a stamp in from 1981, just barely visible. But it's great here, so it has been issued, it has been used. But by the looks of it, the guy who had it, or the guys that had it, have looked after it because it's got very little darning on it, some bit of stitching. That's it. The only crap bit about it is the name tag bit, which looks absolutely fucking honking. But we'll crack on. Coming up the hill bit, hill ascent bit, so I'll check back with you in the next little episode. Just stop for a little break. Put some food out for the little man and me. Smash that little Lakuxa from uh, Survival Prodigy. Great little piece of kit. Can't complain yet. He's just absolutely in awe of everything around here. 
It's his first real outing with us, apart from last summer. And he seems to be loving it. Oh, he's found his treats in the bag. Of course he has. Right, it's a little rest stop. And then we'll head up that track there through the forest. We'll just come up from down there. As you can see, it's all on the iPhone 11. So apologies if the camera is absolutely shoddy. But we're heading up that track there. Hopefully over the hill and then back down to the River Swale in Richmond. See you in the next one. So not quite the top, but this, this woodland is fantastic. I mean, look at it. It's just massive. I wish I had one of these woodlands I could play around in back home. There's a couple near me, but nothing as big as this, like. <sighs> I'm willing to something you don't see every day, if you can see it in, just in the woods. Is there a little, a saw course, a high ropes course. Next to a big sheep field, which I'm walking through and trying not to get freaking rammed by sheep. But that is something I've never come across. I mean, that camel netting is gash. <laughs> but, nice little high ropes. Not quite like what I used to the bottom field, but not bad. See the net in the background there with a few high, high boards up there. Interesting. So, I've just come across, come to the end of a field, big ass sheep field over there. Great when they've got lambs and I've got a dog. But, just turn up this and we'll go a bit of a good thing. Good thing in my, in my mind is rural development of land for woodland. The Forestry Commission, which is fantastic because I think there's not enough woodlands in, this, in the country as long as they're not being used as just wood lumber. I'm happy, but I bet it all becomes private woodland, nobody's allowed to use it. Boring, 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 boring. End of rant. See you next one. Such a spectacular view. I've come to the top almost of a uh, beacon plantation, I'm going down the road now and across to the Stone Age Fort. But that, if I zoom in, is almost all the way back home. That view almost goes all the way back up north. I can see the the two wind turbines, and if I'm not mistaken, those wind turbines are pretty much back up north. That's a freaking hell of a view, especially on a clear day. Where was it? So I bit got a bit confused with this one because plantation that's on the map has been cut a bit, cut back a bit. There's the fresh new plantation coming in. So over that way, hit the road, turn right, uh, over up the next hill, and we'll go see a stone into Hillfort, I think. A bit of history, something that Camp with Josh would love, and the Jordy Wild Camper. Shout out to them two boys. Right, on we go. So, we've got to w Williams's Leap, which is just over there in the distance, where that spire is. Apparently the story goes, he was out hunting one day on his young horse, and a swirling fog came in, and his young horse bolted, to which obviously he leapt off, and saved his life. Before going over this big ass drop, which his horse went over. Now the, the fort is apparently at the bottom of that. I misread the uh, gradient lines. I thought they were going up, not down. Stupid boy. Of course they're going down. They're going down the River Swale. As it is in there in the distance. You can see the River Swale. It's peering down there. But that, I'm not going down that. So I'm just going to go along the top. Sensible. Don't want to kill me or the dog. Let's be fair. So, we're so far in. Four mile, 4.6 mile, I'm going about two hours. So not a bad pace, really, or two and a half, three, three mile an hour over some hilly terrain. It's pretty good going. What a view, what a view. Look at that. That's the caravan park, Swale View Caravan Park there. I'm heading off down the valley towards Richmond. So I'll check back in with you in, the next, in a bit. So this is the downhill, the River Swale, down Green Lane. Which will take me to the Strathmore or Strathmore Road. Probably reading that completely wrong. Um, or remembering it wrong anyway. So, all the way down here, then onto the, on the River Swale. I either go straight into Richmond and cut the hike to a, a bit shorter, or cross the river and walk along the river on the on the south bank until I get the the, the uh, rail bridge and cross the rail bridge or the waterfall. If there's a crossing, I can't remember if there's a crossing the waterfall. We came here a, few, a couple of years ago. Um, obviously, with all the all the pandemic and everything. But this is about the time in the video we're out here. I would love to have a like and a subscribe for you guys. Thank you for the support. Thank you for watching anyway. Um, obviously, there'll probably be a few few more episodes, a few more little snippets to go, because it's just the downhill bit to the River Swale. 
monsters somewhere. There he is. I'm still going pretty strong. Um, LK35 is banging. I recommend it. If you can find one, get one. I'm sure. I think Mary Mart still got the, the uh, Kodura ones. This one's a canvas one. I snapped it up as soon as possible. Um, but get yourselves one. Because frame backpacks, don't know why they ever got rid of them. I mean, I know the frames used to be heavy. But we've got aluminium now. It's mint. You can do all sorts of them. They're a multifunctional, multi purpose piece of kit. If you read anything about backcountry bushcraft and like Dave Canterbury stuff or and like Kef from Kephart or, or uh, Jaeger or whoever, they all talk about like sort of frame packs or bucket packs or basket packs, all those kind of things that, that indigenous people used, mainly in the Americas, but indigenous people used like all these things. And why aren't we using them now? We're creating modern things with solid, solid frames inside the backpack. Or right, yes, they're comfortable, they're ergonomical, and they look jazzy. But to be honest, if you're out doing stuff like we do, like for instance, hiking up and down, carrying all the stuff, you don't you want to travel lightweight, but still carry a reasonable amount of gear in and outside the pack, and you and you know what you're doing. They're the best thing possible. I mean, that may have just been a ramble on, probably is a rambling, but. You can basically carry whatever you want in this thing. I could use this as a three, four day, night, three, four nighter pack if I wanted to. If I dialed my kit down, I could probably do that. In the same instance, somebody who went, who went for three or four days, three or four nights camping, like for instance, walking the Cheviot or the Pennines or on the Moors or whatever, might have a 60, 65 litre, like almost like a Bergen, like used to use in the reserves. And that thing's freaking huge. Rain covers and air gaps and all sorts. I've got an air gap here. The frame keeps my back off the pack. There's an air gap. My back has been well, admittedly sweaty, but has been very highly ventilated the entire day. So, if I'm honest, frame pack, love them. I mean, I love surplus. I'm biased, but I love, love these frame packs. And I have only had it two days, and I'm already looking at how people have modified theirs. I don't know whether they modify mine as much as other people. Maybe just get the waist belt. And I might get it with some Molly Webbins so I can stick some uh, extra pouches on. A little extra, extra going on. But we'll see. Anyways, catch you next time. And there it is. The River Swale. We made it. Now along standard bridleways with car parks. And we've got to interact with humans. Oh, man. I do like it. interacting with humans. Don't get me wrong. When I'm out on a hike, I'd rather not. Unless I'm with friends. Uh, yeah, there you go. Give us a whale. And we're... 6.6 nearly 6 .6 miles. Not bad going. He stayed strong the entire time, which I'm buzzing about. But hey-ho. Almost at an end. Almost at a nice crisp cold beer. Definitely put a picture on Instagram. We're going to follow on Instagram as well. And the Geordie Wanderer. On Instagram and on, on, on there. What am I on? YouTube. Can't even think. More stuff like this. So doesn't what you fancy. Bushcraft, outdoors, adventure, whatever. It takes me fancy really. I like canoeing, kayaking, rock climbing. Mostly I'll be out doing woods. Capturing a few pictures of nature. See if we can do some tracking. Doing a lot of bushcrafty things as well. Bushcrafty. Bushcraft. Try to test out my knowledge, see what I can do. Maybe even take some videos to go on courses if I ever get a chance to go on a course. But so this is me signing off. Got the river swale. I might do a little, little excerpt at the end, have a beer, but I will catch you next time.